I would like you all to go to the website and watch my clip 11 times. So instead of working, you yes. want to... Okay. Yes. Yes. Come on. Because I'm a manager here. Oh, no, no. Get it up. There's absolutely nothing, nothing to report. That's... Welcome back, Joe, again, here for Go Roll Aquatics. We're going to get into this here in a second, take a look at those shark jaws. But if you're new to the channel, I don't know if you saw that last one or not, but we're really starting to get uh, hot and heavy on the 12-footer, which is right here. So if you didn't see the last two videos, be sure to go back and take a look at those. We're starting to work on the filtration system, which is this right down here. we got to make some sense of that. Hopefully in this video, we're going to have to get in to the bottom over here and somehow get that to there. It's going to be a little tricky. We're going to have to move the board. But also in this video, we're going to have a little bit of a surprise. We've got something else we're kind of working on, and that's this guy right here. 720 gallon aquarium. This one's eight by three by four. Temporary sitting on this little makeshift stand right here. Right there is the real deal. So we gotta pick this guy up and slide it over. So like you said, got a lot going on. Saddle up, strap in. Here we go, we got a lot to do. Let's roll. All right, so first things first, you can see I got a little bit of the shark jaw collection. I mean, I don't even know where I've been getting these things, but little by little as the years have been going by, somehow they just keep on adding up. If I remember this one down here was a bull shark, probably that size, probably look around six, seven foot. I think we got a mako there, another mako. This was a tiger shark right there, and then another mako. So just a little collection of shells over here on the end. Not much. We've got a couple other boxes in the other room that I'm probably going to lay out in time. So I think we're going to hang these shark jaws right up here next to the their World Aquatic sign. I think they look kind of cool right there. I just now noticed that the first set of lights are coming on right now in the thousand gallon tank. So I obviously I think as time goes by, like right here we just kind of sit here with some bar stools taking a look at the thousand, but the, I think the big overall picture is the 720 is going to go right back here in the corner because if you guys remember a couple of videos ago the original 720 that sat there it broke we had to get rid of it and then we went ahead and found this new one a couple of guys uh, stepped up real fast this thing was on Facebook marketplace and uh, we went out and got it time would go by we we would put a corner overflow box remove the center island overflow box capped it because right there from the original stand we, we had one right there but it did not like that we want to go with this style to really kind of open up the whole center section of the uh, of the tank so what I did was I took over to the stand. So you can see on the back here, you got the ply lines, right? You're probably going to have the uh, the main siphon and then the backup. And then the third one is going to be an emergency. So I've got three there that are standing by for an inch and a half bulkhead. And then in the corners, there's a one inch, another one inch right there. So that shape right there, I just went ahead and transferred that over to right here. So the very first step we need to do, cut this out. This three quarter inch plywood as opposed to drilling all the different holes in the plywood for all the bulkheads to go through that's not even worth it so we're just going to take out that whole section so the very first step go ahead and cut that get that out of the way then we're probably going to be putting padding down we've got like a seven eight thick gym pad which i'll show you here in a sec we're going to lay that down before the tank gets landed all right so this stuff right here this is 24 by 24 it's actually seven eight thick. Obviously you can tell they interlock to one another. I came across a deal probably four or five years ago. Guy had like 600 of these things in his backyard. Oh, he pretty yeah. much said come and get them. They're not cheap. I mean if you look them up uh, on Google or Dick Sporting Goods I think these things were like $12.99 a pop. And I don't even think they were 7 eighths thick. I think they were like half inch. So these work out great for underneath the aquarium. We'll just go ahead and line them up right here. Obviously we're going to be 8 foot long, 30 inches. No actually 36. 36 front to back. And then we'll just go ahead and shape the whole thing. And I think what's going to happen though in time, this is part of the closed loop. So there's a return, a return. There's another return way down there. And then you, well, at one time there was another one right there. But we can't use that one now because obviously the corner overflow box. Then the supplies were right there. So this was a two inch, that was a two inch. And then the four that went around the perimeter, they were one inch return. So we're going to bring that back in play real soon. And I can drill up from the bottom with the with the hole saw drill. I'll go through the pad, and once we line this up exactly where it was before, I think if you look closely, there's actually a thin, there's a line right here. This was the front of the tank, and right there was the back of the tank. Once we land that tank and go up and drill straight up, which in this case obviously 
going to be coming right through the bottom of the tank. You notice something. we got bar stock around that perimeter. Oh, that's going to be a problem. That's going to be... That's going to be close. It's interesting. That's the first time I actually saw that. Hopefully this bar stock that we put in around the perimeter of the tank is not going to catch us for the return lines. Yikes! So I'll be looking at that. Actually, the more I think about this, those supply lines, man, is that going to be another problem? I think I'm kind of seeing this for the first time with you guys as I'm filming this. I'm not for sure if the thing is lined up. It's kind of lined up. So looking at those holes right there, that might be in the way of this plate that we put down. Oh boy, I might have a problem here. I might have to be do a little bit of modification, possibly with these holes back here and get it get it over here. Because I don't want to put the hole there because then the bulkhead won't sit down correctly. Oh, huh, interesting. All right, so we'll get into that. First thing is we got to get the rigging set up and let's get ready to uh, pick this bad boy up and slide it to the right. All right, so like I said in the last video, I think I screwed up a couple different ways here. I mean, obviously this thing's a monster. And I think at one time what I was thinking was we're going to wrap the whole inside here with three quarter inch plywood and then kind of do the whole fiberglass and then pine armor and just make it one big resin body. But I just, I got too much going on. I have no time for that. And I don't really know the future of this stand. I just kind of want to make it quick, simple, and to the point. And hopefully someday if I ever have to move it, it it won't be, you know, too overwhelming. I think what we're going to do is we're going to attempt to use this filter. And to do that, I've got to pull off a couple of these boards here in the end. That should be no big deal. One of the things I did notice was this three-quarter, not three-quarter, but inch and a half, uh, two-by-six that we have there on the back wall. This guy right here. I don't know what I was thinking, but that's got to come out. Because believe it or not, that inch and a half thickness is screwing up everything right here. Because I'm like literally right on 36 inches. And this being 36 inches, it, I mean, it is so tight. I mean, there's a couple areas right here where it's like 35 and 7 eighths, which I'm not quite sure how that happened. But believe it or not, that little bit of a difference is enough to have impact of this thing sliding in. So, all that being said, I was looking at one night going, well, wait a second, why is it 2 by 6 there even in the first place? It should have been between all the verticals. So, we're going to take that out. We're going to put in individual boards between all the verticals. That'll gain us an inch and a half in width, and that should really change things up. So, with that being said, let's get on that right now. All right, so we got the boards cut. Let's go ahead and throw these in. And I noticed when I walked away that my buddy showed up. Welcome to the video, Jesse. Here we go. Santa Claus. Santa Claus? Yes. Dude, he has come and gone. All right, so I just cut the plywood. You can see I've got a nice opening there where eventually all the supply lines are going to go through and the returns. But now I just remembered, crap, I used two layers of three-quarter plywood. So I need to lay this one down, draw some uh, black marks on that plywood there, and probably have to cut this one right here on location. That's going to make a major mess. But there's nothing else I can do. Well, I guess disregard my last. We can slide the plywood right off. For some reason, I thought we had that kind of bolted down and there was something up underneath, but that's not the case. Let's go ahead and pull this out and knock out this next opening right there. All right, so I got the second opening cut, so we're ready to go there. I went ahead and wiped this whole thing down, so we're looking good. But check this out. Almost looks like Christmas time here under the stand. Talk about a blast from the past. Man, I feel like I haven't seen this thing for like a good year and a half. Looks like some of the rope lighting is falling off but i can go ahead and stick that on the frames around the perimeter yeah look at this thing kind of a cool looking layout we did a video on this long time ago probably throw the thumbnail on the screen real fast if you want to go back and see how we did this back in the day this was a crazy filtration system for not only obviously the main filtration but also the closed loop system but now that i am looking around because obviously right here is where all the new bulkheads are going to be. We're going to have to reshape all this because this is going to be in the way. So that blue and orange line are going to have to come out. Eventually, ply lines have got to dump right into this 180 gallon sump. So that's another project coming up. All right, so it's been a couple hours. You can see I've got all the 2x6s in between the upright vertical board. That's looking a lot better, and obviously we gained an inch and a half there. But now, two pieces of plywood are already in position. So little by little, we're going to be walking our way across the stand. One thing that finally just kind of caught my eye. You remember, we've picked up these uh, Burr Reef Octopus Protein Skimmers. Now, we got these from Ohio Fish Rescue. These were part of the Bellagio tanks. Go ahead and throw a photo real quick up on the screen here. 
But these were out in Las Vegas with those two particular 20 footers. Got these probably about a year and a half ago from those guys and we're going to put them to good use. But one of the things that's kind of catching my eye, tables right here that the actual protein skimmers sit on. Man, what the heck am I going to do with these? I think I just came up with a good idea because we really don't want these under the protein skimmers. These things are already 39 inches tall, so I don't need that. What I can do is take both of these, I guess we'll call them little tabletops, thinking about putting those underneath the filter sock, raise that up seven and a half inches, and let the water pass right up underneath. Let me show you real quick. All right, so take a look at this. We just went ahead and raised up the sock table by putting these two tabletops up underneath. Obviously, raise it up seven and a half inches. And I like that because now, get over here so you can get a better view of this. When that water comes out these little slots over here, remember there's one and one right back there. There's one there, there's one here, there's one right there. Nothing on the back. And by having this up in the air, now the water, obviously it's not going to be way down here by this thing sitting on the ground. And this being probably about... Was about four inches by having this all the way up. Let me, let me get the tape measure real quick. Yeah, right there. So you're roughly about 12 inches to the bottom mm -hmm. of that slot, which is good because now the elevation of the water that's physically inside this sump will literally be right there, probably around 12, 12 and a half inches as it comes out of that oblong hole four times over. So now I think what I'm trying to figure out is as the water is entering here, going down, pouring out all four sections we want the water to travel to the left i'm thinking about somehow some way connecting these two sumps together with multiple bulkheads could be two or three inch pipe the ideal is to get the water traveling this way and then come back around i'm trying to figure out i'm thinking about maybe dividing this tank put in a wall through here and have the water travel across the back work its way right through here because I'm starting to see how this whole thing used to work back a couple years ago whoever had it before I'm thinking the water at one time came through here and like an emergency overflow they had this one and the water would and this is what this T is this was kind of like a break wall as the water was coming through it actually hit this and stopped it pushed it this way filled up this whole area and then the water traveled through these mechanical filters which I showed you earlier which you can easily put different forms of material through here and then easily change this out every 30-45 days I think that's pretty slick and then the water comes through here right after it goes through all six of these and that was picked up by the return motors right here. I think it's all starting to come together to me now. All right, so it's the next day. The plywood is finally in. I got this thing screwed all the way around the perimeter and down through the middle. Look at this thing. It's 12 feet to the other side, but now time to throw some paint on. So let's go ahead and knock this thing out and uh, make it look a lot better than what it does right now. All right, just like that, we got the bottom of the stand all painted up. We use an espresso bean flavor, a little bit of a two-tone effect. Kind of matches pretty nice, I think, with the black. But then again, you're probably not going to see this at all because we're going to have, we got to put the pad on the bottom to give a little bit of protection to the sump that's right here next to me. So not only that, I ran a bead of silicone all the way around the perimeter to uh, just in case any water were to try to get out, we can at least capture it right here inside the belly of the stand and we'll know it. I even put a bead across there and there where two pieces of plywood come together. Other than that, now the big thing is the sump. I just broke out the pipe wrench you go ahead and take off the two bulkheads for the pipes that were right here all right so not only do we need to remove these two two inch pipes because at one time these were return lines that went back to a uh, probably to a pretty big system at one time I'm not quite sure what the second one is for all I know this thing could have been pivoted down or maybe it was rotated up I'm not for sure because maybe this thing fed a huge system and maybe there was a motor there and a motor there I'm not quite sure. The supply line over here, three inch pipe, that's got to come out because I think we got we need to cap this off and the same with this one and this one because I think our motor is going to be probably down inside here that goes back to the tanks. All right, I got to point this out real quick. I'm trying to get this nut off the bulkhead right here. See this ring right here? This nut right here? This thing was so dry, I couldn't get it off. So I threw some water on it. I guess we'll kind of lube it up, I guess we'll say. And with that, this thing's coming off nice and easy. So little tip, little trick there for, for some of the older bulkheads. If they start to hang up on you a little bit, just throw some water on it. That's 
that's what she said. <laughs> Michael. Michael. <laughs> Come Michael, on. please. There he is. Please. There he is. Come on. All right, so just a quick update. As you can see, I've got all the lights put on. I had to silicone it back of those guys. Anything else I tried using in the past just did not work, so I just broke out some silicone and the caulk gun. Now you see they're holding pretty good. I've got a little bit of tape right now. Holding that down for a couple hours while it locks in, but I also broke out the saw here. Let me get over here. I went ahead and cut the orange pipe and the blue pipe, so those are out of our way. Not quite sure where we're going to go with it in the future, but I gotta get them out of the way now. More likely, you're probably gonna see a couple in there in time. And the same over here on that uh, return line, which goes back to the closed loop. And the blue was the supply. Probably double couplings and you're gonna reroute that in time. But there's the extra pieces right now. Go ahead and get those out of the way, vacuum this all up, and it's time to put the wood on. We gotta get this tank on here. All right, just like that, the plywood is back on both layers of three-quarter inch. But the big thing, obviously, is that cutout we did way back there for the supply and return line corner overflow box, which is right there. So I don't know. Look at the plywood. It looks like it might need an extra coat of paint. It's been a couple of years, looking pretty rough. Not sure if I want to use blue or go with that espresso bean that we had over there on the 12-footer. But before we go ahead and slide the tank on, we probably need to clean the mirror. It's looking kind of rough. And then maybe wipe down the back of the tank, polish it up a little bit, because obviously once this the tank goes on the stand, we start closing the gap. You're going to have probably one inch mirror in the back of the tank. But other than that, I think it's time to hook up the rigging, kind of prep the tank for a lift, and uh, it won't be long now. Let's go ahead and get this thing uh, ready to pick up and put on the stand. All right, so I'm going to show you guys how we're going to pick up this 720-gallon tank. The weight of it, I'm not for sure. I would think, I mean, maybe you guys can uh, throw me your suggestions or your guesses in the comments below. I would think probably pushing 900 to 1,000 pounds. This is an inch and a quarter thick. I could probably go to Google and find the formula and do all the math. Maybe I'll do that here and throw it up on the screen. But I don't know. You guys go ahead and tell me what you're thinking. This thing's eight foot long, four foot tall, three foot wide. I might have said that a few seconds ago earlier in the video, but she's heavy, inch and a quarter. But what we're going to do is I'm going to put the slings on it. Now, right now, I've got it upside down. You can see how I've got it draped. They call it a basket. So when I go ahead and grab this thing from the bottom and lift straight up, they call that a basket lift. Obviously, there's the eyes of the sling. There's not much room from the top of the tank to the ceiling, so that's kind of tricky. What I do specifically on this lift, I've got this bar stop. We put a clevis here in the center. I'm going to go ahead and set everything up right now with the chain fall. You'll see what this looks like here in a little bit. But normally, you'd, you know, when this basket goes around and grabs, the slings would come together, and then you would put another clevis there, and then obviously the chain fall itself would grab that. But when you tighten everything up, I literally don't have the real estate on a lift to get what I got to get to get the bottom of this tank to the top of that standard litter that you don't have the room to do it like a normal lift. And that's why I've got this bar stock. So let me go ahead and set this up. You're going to see what it looks like here in a second. One week later. All right, guys, today's the day. So we are prepping to lift the tank. You can see the pads are going down right now over here on the right and then down here on the ground. Dominic and Ian are prepping to scribe and cut those four pads. And those are going to go in the front. So you're going to see that here in a second. As far as the rigging, you can see I've got the slings underneath. The basket that we were just talking about a few seconds ago. And then we're right up here. It's like that. And we're connected to the ceiling with the chain fall. So we're going to try to piece this together here. So the only way to make this work is we're going to have to slide two 2x4s two underneath the tank, which you're going to see here in a second, so that we can slide it onto the real stand. All right, so the rest of the pads are on. You can see we've got an opening down there for the supply and return lines, and now it's time to lift up the tank a little bit and start sliding boards. All right, so the tank is up in the air. We've got about five or six 2x4s up underneath this left side, and we're taking a 2x4 all the way across pads. And you can see it's locked in right here with two screws. And that's there so that when we go to push the tank, this board doesn't come all the way over here and hit the mirror. So we're kind of locked in. So that was a must right there. But right now, time to lower down the slings, transfer all that weight into the 2x4s, rid of the slings, and then start sliding the tank over to the right. I can't stay on top of you 24-7. All right, so the slings are off. We're on the 2 by 4s See up there? Baskets are free. So right now, all the weight is right there. And we're just going to go ahead and slide this over to the right. Camera down because I think we're on borrowed time right now. But we're almost there. All right, so we are almost there, as you can tell. Maybe just, uh, what do we got here? About one foot to go. And the opposite side is looking pretty good so far. We're about 
four and a half, five inches off that wall. We're gonna push this back a little bit more, then we'll pull out all the two by fours. So all the boards are out except for the last two. Now this is the tricky part. This one's easy. We could probably just lift up the end of the tank, maybe with our fingers or a lever. This one over here, this is gonna be the tricky one. Somehow we've gotta pick up the whole side of the tank, just enough to slide this two by four out. All right, so just a few seconds ago, we actually put a lever right here, meaning there was a two by four down and we did a pick on the end of the tank. And with that, we had the ability to slide out this two by four. And now over here, we're gonna do the same thing. Obviously this one's a little bit more trickier because we're kind of grabbing the corner of the tank. I don't wanna to get too close. So we're gonna back it up about 12 inches. We're just gonna put a little bit of pressure on this, just enough to slide this eight foot two by four out from underneath the tank. So you can already see that this side's down. So all the weight, well, some of the weight is right here. We're gonna put a little bit of pressure on this, not much, and slide up that two by four. All right, so there it is. Holy cow, man, I think that's been like two years in the making just to get this thing from, from the video a long time ago when we bought the tank from the guy that was probably in the Toledo area, if I remember. Uh, you can probably go back to the channel, scroll down, and you'll see this particular tank coming out of some guy's bedroom window. We had a whole crew of guys there to, uh, to help move it. And if you remember, this tank went to Pennsylvania so we could do the, the corner overflow box and then obviously put in the, uh, the bar stock around the perimeter, bottom, and then polishing. Actually, I'm going to get inside here. The outside is somewhat polished, but I need to do a little bit of work on the inside. I just wanted to get it up on the stand. I really want to open this area up because we're going to be doing a, uh, I think what's going to happen here is you're probably going to have like a poker table set up going on right here. This distance from here to here is about 12 foot. I think it'd be kind of cool to put a poker table there in the middle. And as you remember, I think we talked about this before. See how this is all kind of you know drywalled in? So you're only viewing the two walls. See that angle? We're going to do the same right here. So all this is going to get fully cased, top and bottom. So this is going to match identical to this. So 1,000 gallon on, on the left and 720 on the right should be a pretty sweet setup all right so now i guess we can break down all the chain falls all this rigging get rid of this stand clean up the area then i guess we'll start uh, little by little start working on the supply and return line system up underneath it should look pretty good it's time to work on the sump it's time to put the sump down inside the belly 12 footer so let's get rolling on that right now so i was looking at this stand a little bit closer and i tell you what this thing is just kind of hodgepodge together look right here there's one board there this is coming right up through the middle so that's not right this should have been probably under the two by sixes there's another little board there another little board there another little board there same thing there so this thing is just kind of hodgepodge together i don't think we're going to need it i think i'm going to take the battery drill we're going to break this thing down we'll repurpose all those two by sixes somewhere else in another project so it's just in a way i i just don't see this being used for anything so i see uh goodbye to this particular stand let's go ahead and uh break it down all right so it's been about an hour and as you can see i've got the rest of the pads up underneath the bottom of the stand there so we're ready there we took off the board that we're here on the end of the tank this uh two by four and over there was a two by six there's enough there this is not even cantilever because you can see we've got this board back here and then i got this two by six right here in the front so i don't think that's going to be an issue tank for a while i think we're safe there but the reason i took off those boards i get the filter in and look at this stands on the carts and it's such a tight fit it's actually right underneath my shelf that's how close this is so we're gonna go ahead and roll this in there and uh, kind of do a dry run see how this looks all right so there it is finally after all these weeks we have both of those sumps up underneath the stand now this guy here this is seven foot long three foot front to back i think this was 16 inches tall if i remember and then this one over here on the left this one's four foot long three foot front to back same thing 16 inches tall the big goal now is to try to figure out how we are going to connect the two now granted there's a lot of holes whoever had this thing before me look at all those holes on the end of this thing one two three four five six seven eight nine ten at least ten holes we need to cap those and we need to put in new holes somehow some way from this one to this one multiple bulkheads probably two inch pipe so that the water can actually pass through and go right back out. I kind of like the fact that the protein skimmers on the left, we need to get a fixed elevation in here so we don't have to dial this thing constant. Kind of like I did on a thousand gallon tank. We're trying to get a fixed elevation over there on, on this left tank. But yeah, that's it. Finally, this thing is underneath the tank and now we can, now granted this is kind of a dry run. Now I can kind of look at it trying to figure out the next step. I know over here, you know, was I was pushing it in. We had no choice but to take off that three inch bulkhead over there. 
So same thing, these two holes that are right here, those have got to get capped off some way, and same with those big three inch ones over there, which I wish there was another way as opposed to welding on a piece of acrylic because once that's on, it's on. It'd be nice to do something where, you know, a couple years down the road, those could be removed and then somebody else or me, maybe on a whole different style of filtration system, you could take that off and then reuse these two holes over here. I'm going to figure that part out. But yeah, that's where we are at right now. Let me look underneath here. So yeah, those all those pipes are going to be coming through, going right into the sock filtration. So that's kind of where it all starts right there. All right, so yeah, that's going to take some time now. We're going to know the pipe work. But I'll tell you what, let's wrap up this video here. That's what we we're trying to get to. You guys at least see the next step. I think we've got it. All right, appreciate you watching. Subscribe if you have not. See you in the next video. Thanks, guys. Till then.